material eh? later on for your revision. So good morning once again. Uh, let us start with the basic definitions. Today we are going to look at the basic definitions. Number one, let us look at the most common definition. What is a strategy? Strategy, we can say a strategy is a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term goal. That is the most basic definition of the terminology, a strategy. A strategy, this is a plan of action designed to achieve a long-term goal. Yeah. This is a situation where we are somewhere in a company and we want the company, as a company, we have a goal. How do we achieve that goal? Now we come up with a plan of action. We list down several things that are going to help us achieve our goal. As a company, we want to be the number one logistics service provider in Kenya and East Africa. The number one logistics service provider in Kenya and East Africa. That is our goal. Now, how do we achieve that? How do we become the number one logistics service providers in Kenya and East Africa? So to achieve that, we then come up with a strategic plan, the plan of action, something that will help us achieve our goals. That's how we define a, a strategy. Let us look at what is strategic management. Uh, this unit has been borrowed from a field called strategic management. Uh, remember, remember, our unit is called strategic purchasing and surprise management. Strategic purchasing and surprise management. Here we have two things, purchasing and strategic management. Those are two different fields. So we, the procurement officers, we are borrowing what happens in the field of strategic management. When you go to a company, you will find the purchasing department on one side and the, the strategic management department on the other side. So we are going to borrow the element of strategic management and use it and apply it to fit our needs in the area of purchasing. So as individuals, we come up with various strategic management objectives to enable us achieve our goals as a company. Let us look at what is the definition of strategic management. Strategic management involves the formulation and implementation of major goals and initiatives taken by an organization's managers on behalf of stakeholders. Another definition, strategic management is the process of setting goals, procedures, and objectives in order to make a company or organization more competitive. Yeah. So here we are setting goals. We come up with the goals. We come up with the procedures to achieve those goals. And then we come up with objectives in order to make a company or organization more competitive. Through strategic management, we want to make our organization more competitive uh, so that we can make more profits and get more customers. Because we are not alone in the market, we have other players as well. Another definition of strategic management, this is formulation and implementation of the major goals and initiatives taken by our, an organization's managers on behalf of stakeholders based on consideration of resources and an assessment of the internal and external environments in which the organizations operate. 
and an assessment of the internal and external environments in which the organization operates. That's another definition of strategic management. The creation of goals and initiatives to achieve those goals. So we sit down, create a goal, and then we come up with how do we achieve that goal. The, we are assisted by objectives. We do this in line with what we call objectives. We want to increase profits. How do we increase profits? We want to grow. We want to grow and expansion. How do we achieve growth and expansion? So we come up with objectives to help us achieve our goal. Those objectives are what we are calling initiatives. Taken by the organization's managers on behalf of stakeholders. Remember, we are together in the other class we call leadership and governance. And remember how we have been discussing the relationship between the stakeholders and the managers of a company. The stakeholders of a company, the shareholders, they employ the management to manage the business on their behalf. So the management will come up with a strategic direction for the company for the benefit of the shareholders. Based on consideration of resources and an assessment of the internal and external environment in which the organization operates. That's very important because in the other chapters, we shall be looking at how to analyze our internal and external environment. How do we analyze our internal and external environment as an organization so that we can survive based on the resources we have? So that is strategic management. Now let us look at the other definition, strategic purchasing. The next definition we are going to look at is strategic purchasing. What is strategic purchasing? A moment, I open those notes. A moment. Purchasing strategy refers to the actions that the purchasing department may take to achieve its objectives. Purchasing strategies are aligned with corporate level strategies. Let us repeat that again. Strategic purchasing is the process of planning, implementing, evaluating, and controlling strategic and operational purchasing decisions for directing all activities of the purchasing function. and controlling strategic and operating purchasing decisions for directing all activities of the purchasing function toward opportunities consistent with the firm's capabilities to achieve its long-term goals. That is what we call purchasing and supply strategies. Let me repeat that again. Uh, remember, this is our main focus, and this is what we want to concentrate on. Purchasing strategy, this is the process of planning, implementing, evaluating, and controlling strategic and operating purchasing decisions for directing all activities of the purchasing function toward opportunities consistent with the firm's capability to achieve its long-term goals. That is purchasing and supply strategies. So here we are starting with the planning. We plan, what do we want to achieve? 
as a purchasing department. That is what we call planning, forecasting our future. Where do we want to be? And how will we get there? This is where we come up with a goal, what we wanted to achieve in the long term, and then we come up with objectives to support those goals. That is what we call planning. We come up with a plan. A plan is all about forecasting where you want to be in the future. In the next five years, where do you want to be? What do you want to achieve? And then you come up with initiatives. In the other, in the other part, we are calling it initiatives. These are the objectives that now will help you to achieve your goals. And now when you come up with that, you then implement that. Implement it. This is where you put it into action. Convert what is in paper into practical elements, implementing. Then you check if it is working. Checking to see if it is working, this is what we call evaluating. You measure. Remember you have plans that you have put into action. Then you measure if those plans are actually going, are actually working. Remember you said you started with a goal what you want to achieve. Then with that goal, you have objectives that are helping you to accomplish the goal. But now, are you achieving your goal? Are the objectives being implemented on the ground? That is what we call evaluating. Evaluating. Then if there's a problem, then we do controlling. We control. If there's a problem, we control. Remember we said a strategic plan provides a direction for a company. Where do we want to be in the next future? A strategic plan provides the direction for the organization. Where do we want to be and what do we want to achieve? Now, are you on the right direction? If you want to go north, are you still going in north or you have deviated? north, east or west and deviation. That is now what we call controlling. You control the decisions. Uh, and the purchasing decisions, we have said purchasing strategies are aligned with the corporate level strategies. Remember, as an organization, the organization has one vision statement, mission statement, and objectives. Now, as a department, as the purchasing department, once you come up with your own strategic plan as a department. Your strategic plan as a department should be used to help the company achieve its overall corporate level strategy. So in a company, we shall have two levels of strategy, the organization level and now the departmental level. But what each department is going to do, this should be used to achieve the overall organization goals and objectives. Any questions so far? Are we okay up to that point? Yes. We are on the right track to Kopamoja. Eh? Let us look at uh, let us look at examples of objectives, strategic management objectives, especially in purchasing. Let us look at purchasing objectives and the strategies. A strategy of the purchasing department can be, number one, to maintain the continuous and regular flow of materials to an organization to ensure operations go uninterrupted. That is one major strategy of the purchasing department. Continuous flow of materials to ensure that operations are not interrupted. And what operations are these? If we are doing manufacturing, we ensure that raw materials are coming in continuously without interruptions. These are the raw materials. If we are doing retail, we are a supermarket, we should ensure that we get our supplies from various suppliers at the right time without interruption of supplies. We don't want our customers going and finding empty shelves that do not support the company. Remember, the company might have the overall objective of increasing profits, increasing sales. You cannot increase sales and you have what you call 
materials are running out of stock. If materials run out of stock and you want to increase sales, that will not happen. Customers will go looking for your products and they will find them to shelves. So you will not achieve your objectives. Number two, development of internal relations with users that leads to understanding and harmony. Yeah, this is very important. The purchasing department should build relationships mainly with suppliers and the other departments in the organization so that we can have efficient flow of raw materials within the organization. This is what we are calling development of internal relations with users. That leads to understanding and harmony. If you do not have a positive long-term relationship with the suppliers, you will be affected. You will get highly affected. Suppliers will let you down. Delays in deliveries. They will deliver materials of raw qualities. Raw quantities. Raw quality, the wrong quantity. You should have a very problem, a very big problem coming up with the finished products of the right quality. Because you do not have that good relationship with your suppliers. The same thing, you need a good relationship with the other departments in the organization so that you can coordinate activities together within the organization. Remember, as purchasing department, we cannot work alone. We need a positive, long-term, integrative relationships with the finance, HR, marketing, manufacturing. Without such kind of relationships, things will not work. Another reason, another major strategy of the purchasing department is the ability to get materials at low prices for the best value obtainable through negotiation. This is another key objective of purchasing department, a key strategy of purchasing department to negotiate with the suppliers so that we get low prices for the best quality. We want to get the lowest prices ever for the right quality of products. Remember, the higher the cost of the raw materials, the higher the selling price. The higher the cost of raw materials, the higher the cost of the selling price. And remember, we are not alone in the market. We have competitors in the market. So at the end of the day, our products will be highly priced compared to the other players in the market. And this will work against us. This will be to our disadvantage. Another strategic objective of purchasing department is to keep the expenses as low as possible. Keep the expenses as low as possible. Apart from the cost of buying raw materials, all the other internal costs inside organizations should be kept to the bare minimum. We call these operating expenses. The cost of maintaining materials in the warehouse, cost of labor, cost of movement, cost of distribution, everything, all those costs should be kept to the bare minimum. Our company might have the overall objective of reducing cost, minimizing cost. This will not be achieved if at a department level we are not saving cost. Those are some of the examples of strategic objectives of the purchasing department. Those were some of the objectives, strategic objectives. We call those strategic objectives of the purchasing department. Now, any question as we proceed? Do you have any question as we proceed? No, Malim, I'm okay. Let us look at something else.
Let us look at what we call, we shall look at two to three points on relationship between purchasing and supply strategy and corporate strategy. What is the relationship between the two? Let us add a few points there. Relationship between purchasing and supply strategy and corporate strategy. Number one, coordination. We have a lot of coordination. The purchasing department should have to integrate the purchasing strategies to fit with those of the corporate strategy. That is number one, coordination. Relationship between purchasing and supply strategy and the corporate strategy. Coordination. The purchasing department should have to integrate the purchasing strategies to fit with those of the corporate strategy. That is the only way we are going to achieve value in the organization. Number two, monitoring and getting feedback. The top management will be checking closely to establish whether the purchasing department is fully committed to implement the strategies of the organization. So the top executives, these guys will be very busy monitoring what is happening in the purchasing department. Are we adding value to the company? That is monitoring and getting feedback. That's another major contribution. Number three, planning. The purchasing plan must be established to suit or fit the overall corporate plan and within the set budget. Our budget should be fit and work according to the corporate budget and plans. The two should match. We normally say that these two should match. The two should match and fit together. We should get a perfect match planning. And lastly, we have what to call communication. Lastly is communication. Decisions made at the corporate level should be cascaded down or communicated effectively to the purchasing department. Once we make a decision at the top, now the directors, the CEO, the managers, once they make a decision, this decision should be cascaded down to the purchasing department. So that now the purchasing department can align their goals with what is happening at the company level. Let us go to the next thing, what we call purchasing and supply strategies. We are going to look at a few strategies we can come up with as a department, something we can do practically and it will add value to the corporate strategy. Remember here we have two different levels of strategy, corporate strategy and purchasing strategy, purchasing department. Corporate level strategies, this is what is happening at the top, from the top executives. And this is what everybody in the organization is following, all departments, in all our branches, all over. But now, purchasing department strategies, these are confined only to the purchasing department. So now, what are some of the things we can do as a department and it will help the company achieve its objectives? Number one, something what we call surprise. This is the process of working with certain suppliers on a one-to-one -one basis to improve their performance for the benefit of the buying organization. Therefore, purchasing entities have to develop their suppliers so as to get substantial benefits in the long run. They should work hand in hand with their suppliers by developing processes that assist them. This is the first strategy 
the purchase of department can Hollywood. come up with. Yes? And repeat that point again. Eh? Okay, okay. This is the process of working with certain suppliers. This is the process of working with certain suppliers on a one-to-one -one basis to improve their performance for the benefit of the buying organization. Therefore, purchasing entities have to develop their suppliers so as to get substantial benefits in the long run. They should work hand in hand with their suppliers by developing processes that assist them. Let us now explain that. What is a supplier development? This is where an organization will work with their suppliers and vendors as partners and develop them. This is to improve, improve your supplier's performance. After you let your supplier and you find that they are somewhere they have a gap, you come up with a way of improving them. You teach them how to be better suppliers. That is what we are calling supplier development. This is where the organization will practically improve and develop their suppliers for the benefit of the organization in the long run. If your supplier has a problem with quality, you go to their premises and you work hand in hand with the supplier to help them improve their processes so that now if the problem is quality, this can be improved. If your supplier has a problem with delivery, now this is time. They are always late on deliveries. You have a problem of delays. You practically work with the suppliers and they help the supplier to improve on time at the delivery. Instead of terminating the contract, instead of firing them and getting something else, you do the opposite. You develop, improve, take the supplier through conferences and seminars so that they can be better suppliers. That's what we call supplier development. Are we together now? Yes, thank you. Let us go to the next one. I will first of all end, and then we'll discuss. We'll do the explanation. I first of all end the strategy. We are going to look at five stra main strategies. I end, then we discuss the strategy. The other one is what we call supplier optimization. Supplier optimization. The purchasing organization should choose an optimum mix of suppliers who can provide the best prices and the terms. This means that the rest of suppliers who cannot provide a quality service at the terms and prices required are discarded. We call this supplier optimization. This is something else we can practically implement as a department and it will help us add value to the organization. And what is this? Supplier optimization. This is where we reduce the number of suppliers we are doing business with. That is what we call optimization. We choose a few. We reduce the number of suppliers we are working with so that we can have what we call a manageable number of suppliers. There's no need of dealing with that suppliers for the same item. Those are too many suppliers. As an organization, you will not even be able to manage them. There are too many. Okay. Make them manageable. Reduce the number to that, the number that is manageable. Don't choose one. Don't work with one supplier. Don't just choose one supplier and work on with one supplier. No. That will also not be good. But now, choose a few, like five or six. And then develop the five or the six. Wasifika Kumi, 10 is also a very big number. Then suppliers be only on the cool basana. At least work with the five, six, apple. That is what we call supplier optimization.
Another strategy is supply chain management information systems. Supply chain management information systems. Now, this is a strategy where we embrace the technology. Here, you are going to embrace ICT and technology to our processes and procedures and our engagement with the suppliers and the entire supply chain system. Listen to this. Having a robust and up-to-date information system will help the organization to get real-time information from both the customers and the suppliers. This means that customers on us could be filled on time to avoid any delays. And those are some of the applications of ICT. ICT is a very good strategic tool. Yeah, nowadays, we use ICT to improve everything. Any department embraces IT uh, to save cost and time and other very many benefits. So as a strategy, we as the purchasing department, we can now embrace ICT, both the hardwares and the systems and the softwares. Come up with an ERP system. And this is what we are going to use to manage our suppliers and the entire supply chain all the way to the stores, to warehousing. And we are told one of the big advantages of ICT as a, as a purchasing strategy is to avoid delays and to save time. ICT. Let us go to the other strategy. Before we wind up, another strategy, lean strategy. Let me share this spelling with you. Lean strategy. I will share this on the chat. I've shared the spelling there on the chat, Lean. We are calling the, this Lean Supply Chain. Lean Supply Chain. This is another practical strategy we can use to to help the company achieve its corporate strategy. What is Lean Strategy? Lean Strategy. This is where we eliminate waste through continuous improvement. We eliminate waste through continuous improvement. As purchasing department, we look at our entire supply chain process. Our entire supply chain process. And we look places where we are likely to be having a lot of waste. Remember, any raw material we buy, it costs us money. So if it uh, becomes wasted, if it will become part of waste, that is money we are losing. And this will eat up our company's profits in the long run. Is it now visible, Anna? Lean strategy. So we can use lean strategy to help us reduce 
wastage. Reducing wastage will help us reduce any unnecessary costs that are not adding value to the organization. Then we have another one, Agile Strategy. Agile Strategy. Agile Strategy. The next one is Agile Strategy. I've shared there, a pop a chat. Agile Strategy. Listen to this. Agile Strategy aims to respond quickly to changes in demand or supply and ensure that the organization handles external disruptions appropriately. This is where we are able, as a company, we are able to respond to customers' demand on time. Remember, this is about matching demand with the supply. Demand comes from customers and supply comes from the organization. How much is the organization able to supply to meet the demand from the customers? Now, as purchasing department, we should come up with various research tools. Research tools are going to help us to match demand with the supply. So that in case there's an increase in the supply, we have enough, no, not increase in supply, in the case there is an increase in demand from customers, we will have enough raw materials to match that so that we don't lose out on our customer base. Remember, we want to increase sales. And if we project that demand from customers will reduce, we also reduce the amount of materials and the finished products we are manufacturing. We reduce our supply. Because even if we produce more, there is no market. It will become past off wastage. This is going to become part of wastage and that they will eat our profits and this will not be good. And lastly, the last strategy we are going to look at is outsourcing strategy. The last thing we are going to look at is what we call outsourcing strategy. This is something else we can do as purchasing department. And this is what is going to add value to corporate strategy. This is a purchasing strategy and it will add value to the corporate strategy. Outsourcing strategy. Let me read something here. This is where one, this is where nine core functions activities are transferred to specialized and efficient external service providers. Nine core functions and activities are transferred to specialized and efficient external service providers. That is what we call outsourcing. Like now, for example, if we have a bakery, our organization is a bakery. Now, there's no need for us to make the polythene bags and the packaging bags. Imagine we are a bakery, we make bread, cake, biscuits. Let us concentrate on making bread and the biscuit, the cakes. The packaging material, those polythene bags, packaging, everything, let us buy that from another supplier. The supplier who is most likely to be more efficient than us, external suppliers. This is what we are calling nani core functions and activities. Nani core functions and activities. Remember, as an organization, our core activity, our core functions, our core activities is baking, baking, making bread. Now, 
polythene bags, making polythene bags, making those packaging materials, that is not our business. So we can give that to a supplier. Let somebody supply that to us. We make the brand, then we package it. That is what we call outsourcing strategy. That is the meaning of outsourcing strategy. Any question? Any question? Any question?